I think it's interesting the hat fairy is so established in the city that you, you, you will hear people saying well, that it started in medieval times and that it was um, it was, was a tradition. From my point of view, I'm very happy that the hat fairy survived. The festival has taken place in the city centre of Winchester ever since 1974. And it's a festival of outdoor arts that uh, takes place traditionally in the first weekend of July uh, throughout the city centre of Winchester in uh, urban spaces and green spaces. It started by one man's inspiration who wanted to bring the arts onto the streets. I'm an actor. I came to Winchester to start a theatre company. His belief was that that was the most egalitarian place for everyone to enjoy the same thing together. From my point of view, it was to stop people in their tracks, to not just have roads that were dealing with getting you from building to building, but you know there was much more creative thing that could happen in the street. <laughs> it was quite a political purpose, really and we hope we are keeping that essence uh, intact and, and we still to this day curate oh, no, hatters, no, 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 yeah. uh, hence the name Hat Fair, of course, for those people who don't know, do um, which is the tradition of busking on the street and uh, asking for money into the hat at the end. Before the Hat Fair, we started to open workshops and gave people a, a direction and the only free place that we could work was in the street. Well, I wasn't around in 1974, uh, so I'm finding out bits of the story as we go along. Uh, as I understand it, Hat Fair started as a street buskers festival, but there was a previous iteration in Covent Garden, which Jonathan was also involved with, uh, but then it moved to Winchester. We joined the Hat Fair at Covent Garden. It was just, you know, a day. That was before it was all done up and it was still the old market. It was just one man with a diary um, full of all the addresses of the people he had contacted, like us, to come do shows. We went two years running. At the end of the second year, he said, I cannot do the Hat Fair anymore. Covent Garden Community Theatre took over the ability to do street theatre, I said, well, let's take the Hat Fair down to Winchester. The main thing I wanted to do was to put the streets of Winchester full of performers. People started coming from all over and they performed in the street and they made money by passing the hat. We were going to do it anyway, you know, much against criticism of everybody. <laughs> we were encouraged not to do it. We were encouraged that it, it was not a benefit to anybody. I think basically people were very, you know, very protective against any new people coming in. We weren't actually rebellious, but just because you're doing something in the street where no one is doing anything, you know, that's because you're doing something not shopping and you're not uh, using the street in the, in the way that everybody else is. I think all outdoor arts is political, with both big and a small p, because you're, you're disrupting public space in a way, in a good way, in a positive way. Um, you know, the, the typical programme at Hat Fair is a mixture of uh, entertaining street arts but also more provocative dance work uh, you know we've just uh, seen a piece by Seb Feathers which is very much a contemporary dance and acrobatic piece very reflective meditative but we're presenting it uh, right beside the high street to an audience who would not necessarily normally go and see that type of work it was in a tradition of you dress up to go to the theatre it's, it's uh, it's a way above us. That was the kind of feeling of people in Winchester. We decided that the best is to put the theatre in the streets so people would have to either walk away from it or uh, stay and watch. If it was rebellious at all, it was to do with the relationship between 
us as young people and those people like uh, the police and um, city council, you know, they were very intolerant of it. If we managed to establish the hat fair, then the hat fair would be that aspect which drove away all this kind of conservative with a small C attitude to, you know, the streets and life itself. Um, it's the kind of work I was doing to enliven the, the streets to get, you know, people in which to wake up. Last year we had a piece by Joseph Tunger called Born to Protest, which is a dance piece, and we presented it in front of the Guildhall. Uh, so in front of the seat of power, you know, in, in Winchester. And that was, uh, that was a very directly quite confrontational dance piece which came out of the Black Lives Matter movement. And, uh, and that was actually more, much more directly uh, provocative. Uh, so the audience uh, maybe felt at times just slightly uneasy or were provoked to think, oh gosh, how do I feel about what I'm being presented with here? We can push things a little bit in terms of uh, some of the issues we're representing and just so that we get people to think again. These families, these children were missing out on all that. Or those people from all over the world who uh, inject so much warmth, you know, into a community. The people who've grown up with the hat fair that have uh, been, not influenced, but they, they've grown up with as part of their imagination. When I first came to Winchester, I was living in a caravan and trying to get this going, trying to get things moving. It, it's very difficult when, you, when you're really working hard to, to get some people to uh, come on your side, you know, they're not on your side, not on your side, not on your side. And then, you know, after about 20 years, then gradually, you know, what's happening is that the Arts Council is changing, the whole attitude to art is changing, street theatres, you know, I mean, it's, it's a huge development from people just collecting in the street, which is, which is how it began to having large companies and money and so on. It was at this point that I think, you know, things like the university and the Theatre Royal, they all felt that the hat fair was um, something that, that they wanted, you know. It's a charity, it doesn't make any money. We have to fundraise for it every year. It costs about £250,000 to put Hat Fair on each year, so it's very challenging. I, I don't think you can un you understand how hard this is, what I'm doing here. Yeah? We work um, in a consortium with other festivals across the country to commission new work designed for the outdoor arts, um, and that's an important strand of keeping outdoor arts fresh and changing and uh, exploratory. We've had some really bad news with Arts Council in the last year. Um, we're no longer regularly funded by them, so we have to find other ways of trying to continue out there. Uh, so the donations that the community give will be all the more important. This is a moment after 50 years of Hat Fair. Uh, what could the next 50 years look like? You know, let's think big, let's think long term. Uh, the arts, and particularly outdoor arts festivals, should evolve, should change. I think that, you know, if you're doing a film about the Hat Fair, it belongs to the people of Winchester. It was people of Winchester getting coming together to do something that wasn't part of the university, wasn't part of Theatre Royal, wasn't part of any, wasn't an accepted. People were putting their enthusiasm and interest behind. They weren't paid. They were just uh, wanting something to happen in Winchester. 
and uh, we just did that 